Hey Facebook, I'm in the car. We are on our way to a ranch where there's a gentleman who wants to donate a lot of land all around his ranch there to Trump to build the wall. And so on the drive out, we've got a amazing car of women. Um, and so I want to introduce some of them to you. So uh, this is Charlotte. And she's a reporter with Epic Times, and so she's got some amazing data she's gonna share with us in just a second. Uh, we also have in the driver's seat, uh, Melissa McCreary, and she is a amazing mom, blogger, businesswoman, public speaker, and um, Chelsea, will you show Melissa while she's driving? And then hey. Chelsea Hicks, who is on the camera, and she can turn around if she wants, if not, she can be incognito, either way. So, um, anyways, but I wanted to get on and we wanted to talk about the real crisis at the border, yeah. in my mind, as a mother, and Melissa's in the French seat being triggered, and we were just like, we got to have this conversation, other moms got to hear this conversation. So, some of the things that was shared this morning um, was this real startling reality. I didn't realize this. You know, we always see on the news with, you know, immigrant women and children coming over and, oh, it's this crisis. It's a humanitarian crisis. But guys, you don't realize this. Those children, some of those children that are coming over are being rented out either by their parents or stolen at some point. And guys, they are being recycled back through the border over and over again. Yes, I just said that. So they come across the border. There's a group of people that come across the border and they have a child with them. They say, I'm here for asylum. They get in and they get through. And guess what? That child ends up back in either the country that they originated from and they do the whole process over again. That is tragic. And so Melissa's up there being told this. Charlotte, will you share with us just some of those stories? Because you've been to the border. You were, you were there with Border Patrol just a couple weeks ago. And uh, and she was saying, you were just saying, you know, you saw this group of guys and you're like, I don't even think this is your kid. So can you tell everybody just a little bit of some of the stories you were talking about, some of the data you were telling us too? Sure. Well, in Yuma recently, um, uh, I'll start with Yuma. The Yuma Border Patrol chief told us that in the first six months of, of 2019 fiscal year, they have discovered 550 fake families. So that's about three a day. And that's only the ones that they find. Um, there are many, many more, he says, that the Border Patrol is so overwhelmed that they don't have the opportunity to, to really find them all. Um, so the, the key, if you have a child with you, then Border Patrol will release you very quickly. And so in the Rio Grande Valley, if we go back to 2014, the, the number of men who were apprehended by Border Patrol, there were fewer than 1% that had a child with them. Now that number is 50%. Wow. So. There's no catastrophic event in Central America that would indicate that that's the reason why all of these men and children are fleeing. So you have to assume that they are doing that to get, to, that's their golden ticket in, is, is to have a child. And the policy is that uh, any child under 14 does not get biographical information taken. That's just a regulation which means it's very easy to circulate a child around, rent them out. Um, Yuma said they are starting a pilot program with um, photographs and fingerprints, but the adult with the child has to consent to that. Mm. And they're also starting a pilot DNA program, but it's very costly, very limited. So if you think there's three a day in Yuma, um, there's three times that number in Rio Grande Valley. Rio Grande Valley, uh, I think it was about three weeks ago, there was a man from Honduras mm -hmm. and he had a one-year-old child with, the, with him and after a while they found out that the child was not his and I have asked a few people now, if he had gotten through, what yeah. would have happened to that one-year-old child? I can't imagine that that man would have looked after and cared sure. for that child. Yeah. So, we don't really know. The child may have been um, just recycled back. Yeah. 
you can't ask a one-year-old child, sure. hey, who's who's your real parent, or yeah. anything like that. Well, and then I read in the news the other day that Border Patrol came up on a group and they just left a six-year-old or something like that. Three for year a three-year-old, yeah. yeah. And he was crying and Border Patrol found him. They just left him all there. Mm-hmm. And I, at the time, it didn't make sense to me because because the way the media tells you is these are families coming over. I'm like, what family? If you just made this trek, leaves their three-year-old right. randomly when Border Patrol comes up. And now it makes sense, realizing mm-hmm. that these are kids that are being not only trafficked, but being being recycled well, over and over again. Yeah. And so, so, and then the other thing we were talking about that was crazy is you're saying that in the States, even, they, these are kids that are being trafficked, that their families are living here, and then they're being re-trafficked through, like living in America. They're not in Mexico. They're living in America, and the kids are being rented out to, to go through this process. But tell me also what happens, what... Once, once these people get here or the kids get here, what's the process that they go through? Because I'm thinking, you know, like I'm, I'm a very pro-adoption. And so I'm thinking, well, what's happening with all these kids? Like if they're being caught, where are they going? So would you mind just sharing those stats too? We so about? that the kids on their own, um, if they're found to be a, a fake parent, then um, DHS will try and find their real, real parents. parents. Sometimes the parent is south of the border sometimes their parent is actually already in America and they're um, basically renting them out they're trafficking them their own child up but using them uh, to get someone else entry and will they be if they find out that they have been trafficked they probably won't even own it but you know would that child then be returned to them or I mean is there is that's child abuse you know is renting (laughs) your child out I don't know enough about it, but yeah. I know that if they cannot find the parents, then that child will go to Health and Human Services, okay. and through the Office of Refugee Resettlement, will be resettled with a sponsor in wow. the United States. So, yeah. um, the Health and Human Services at the moment has twelve over twelve thousand wow. un- unaccompanied minors and wow. children. Wow. And. Most of them actually go to parents who are already in the country illegally. Wow, that's scary. Yeah. But a lot of the, the, the parents put their daughters on birth control before they start the journey because they know they're gonna, likely going to get raped wow. along the way. Wow. And you know, we were talking a little bit too about why they're making the journey. And so some of the things that were shared this morning was, and this was you guys can see some of the broadcasts from this morning on the page. I know they're a little like dry, but it's just a lot of data, but some of the stuff there they're talking about, this is actually the big, big business for cartels. And what was really strange to me, it's almost like how people pitch timeshares. You ever go to like a timeshare meeting and it's like, Hey, it's going to be great. It's almost like to me, I was thinking it's like the cartels are doing this. They're going, they, they were saying they're going to other countries and saying, this is how you come in, come in this way. And they're paying upwards of, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to enter the country in some cases. And actually, you should share your story about the, the story you just did on, on the Chinese gentleman that came in. They came into the country that way. So I think that's really interesting that this is not it's a business model it's not it that's that's that blew my mind again it's not this humanitarian we're coming here for a better life they these people probably think that they are but they're actually being sold on the idea which is so strange to, to me i'm like because i'm a business person i'm thinking like this is an actual sales pitch so anyways. well and the children the trafficking of the children has become a part of that business model yes so like when we're talking about not not necessarily um, South America and China and uh, Middle East and, and those people that are coming over paying ten and fifteen thousand dollars, but just across the border, like he's talking mm-hmm. about the five hundred dollar fee to get across the river by the you know Gulf Cartel, um, knowing that that person more than likely is going to get caught, sent back, and another five hundred dollars. It's like you know this. It's like a ferry fee, if you will, um, to cross the river, um, to be guaranteed to get onto American land. Well, now they're figuring out, okay, will you give us $500? We're going to give you a kid to guarantee your quick release. It's part of their business model. And you have people that have to provide these children. You know, cartels aren't don't have a baby farm somewhere yeah. producing children. They're actually having to either, 
you know, steal or buy yeah. children to guarantee crossing to their clients. Uh, what was the gentleman saying? Um, 12, 1,200 mm-hmm. people? Was that a yeah, day? Yeah, 1,200 people a day. A just day in, in coming that across. And that, yeah. yeah, just in that area. Um, just across the border, three to five hundred dollars a pop, yep. and a child. Yeah, that's a lucrative business. Than drugs, he said right. this morning. The yeah. cartels do, and that's Just the trafficking. That's human trafficking. So human trafficking has become the most lucrative business model of the cartel, yeah. and Americans are wanting to say there's no crisis. Yeah. You have numerous children being abused, their brains being completely rewired. We're talking one-year-olds, you guys have mentioned a three-year-old in a cornfield. First 12 years of life is when our brains are being wired for safety, for security, for trust, um, for self-value, and these children are learning right out the gate incorrectly that they they can't trust anybody their value is in what they can provide for somebody else um for those industries exactly um and if it's not the sex industry it's like the gentleman was saying today Mm -hmm. the smuggling they actually want to they want to be a part of all of this because that's what they've grown up doing they've grown up being the golden ticket to help the smugglers get somebody over and they see all the money that's being made and so what do they want they want to be a part of it it's become systemic Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is happening to babies this is happening to our children yeah it was really weird like when i got here um i was just i was just in prayer like just a lot of prayer leading into it and uh, one of the things I just felt led to pray was protect the babies, protect the babies, God, protect the babies. And I had a, no idea what the heck is this even to have to do with what I'm doing here? Like, I don't know, Lord. And I, I think I'm getting it now. Yeah. I think I'm understanding that, that the real victims here are innocent children. Gutted. And, uh, and really people, just people being brainwashed uh, and being sold a bill of goods to support a business model. And for the cartels to make money. I mean, that's, it's really eye-opening. And, and I remember Le- Melissa and I talking about how sobering it is. But as a mother, as I think every mother that's watching, you read your own child into it. You read yourself into it. And I could never imagine doing that to my child. Ever. Ever. So anyways, it's just, it was so sobering. And it was such an interesting conversation. I wanted to bring everybody into it. Um, and then, and at some point I do, I would love for you just to explain too a little bit more about the business model and how you came across last week with Border Patrol, uh, a a group of guys from China. That was, (laughs) of all places. (laughs) Yeah, I went out with Border Patrol last Thursday in Rio Grande Valley, which that's the busiest area. And the first stop we had was uh, Border Patrol had just apprehended seven Chinese people. And so... I called a friend who speaks Mandarin. I was like, put, yeah. her, put her on speaker. I was like, can you translate? So we, we interviewed one of them, and he said that he paid $15,000 to fly into Mexico and then come across the border illegally. Yeah. And they were trying to evade border patrol, which means usually means they're not here to come and claim asylum. Mm. But that's their backup plan if they do get caught. Wow. And so he said he was going to claim asylum uh, from persecution, and I asked him why he didn't just fly into America and, and claim asylum at, exactly. at the airport. Yeah. And he said, um, this is the way we all do it. And he said he had, uh, a friend had put him in touch with a smuggler in Beijing, and, and it had been organized. And That's amazing to me. Yeah. Why would, I mean, where's that thought come from of like, this is how we do it? Is it just he doesn't understand that you could fly into America and you could claim asylum? Or is he just, he's just thinking like, this is how we do it? I really don't know. Yeah. He was going to go to New York and I don't know if there's some smuggling networks that are, you 
know they're really acting like travel agents. That's that's um, what yeah, I'm saying. It yeah. like. It's a bit. It's a business. It is a business. That's what I'm saying. It reminds me and of a timeshare. Buy different packages actually with it's, different types of food and not the guarantee of not getting raped, but a better chance of not getting raped. Like yeah. you can pay for different things along wow. the way. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Somebody should do like an undercover thing. And like get in contact and just try to go through the whole process and see, you know what I mean? You know, like how there's some of those undercover reporters that like do it. That would be insane to expose. But that's what my eyes have been open to here is that it's actually a business. This isn't making the cartels tons of money. And the victims are children. Yeah. And honestly, these people who, who have been lied to they in have. so many ways. Yeah. They're they're told you're gonna you're gonna have this great life. America wants to help you. It's just it's sad. Well, we were jo- we were joking with Border Patrol and Yuma that they're the, they're the Uber and the Airbnb for these for the cartels, basically. They're, wow. They're, they're just sort of doing the bidding of, of what the cartels are sending them. Amazing. Because the cartels are they're, they're controlling our border security yeah, in America. Exactly. And it's yeah. There's so much we could be talking about, but we'll stay on topic and we'll leave it with this. But uh, Emily, anything you wanted to add before we end the broadcast? No, I'm just, um, I'm, I'm gutted. I'm absolutely blown away um, that these, this systemic issue that's forming future generations um, is going on right under our nose yeah. and, and people want to say there's not a crisis. I tell you what, if there were 1,200 children um, at a school Mm -hmm. that got caught up in, you know, an active shooter thing, let's say, um, and all of them shot. Yeah. Yeah. We would call that a crisis. Yeah. How is this any different? How is it any different? Actually, to me, it's worse because... Lord forbid, I, ha- I have mercy for all these angel parents and 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 people that have school shooters and have lost their children. I have I have tons of, of sympathy for them, um, but these children that are getting actively trafficked, they might not be dead and in heaven. They're living through a life of hell and yeah. then perpetuating it. It yeah. becomes systemic. Yeah shooting situations at schools it doesn't become systemic that I'm, I don't yeah. mean to be crude a dead child does not go out and kill another child sure a trafficked child yeah. does yeah. so how is this not a crisis how how can people have be so short-sighted as to not see the detriment of where this is headed on such a grand scale. Yeah. Huge to me. So, yeah, I definitely found my button this weekend on day two. And um, yeah. I'm, I'm trying not to be completely, totally livid. Yeah. Yeah. But something has to be done. And as we were talking yesterday with that hashtag, it's got to stop. It's but yeah, stop. this has got to stop. All right, you guys. Well, Lord, we pray you protect the babies and help share this because it has to stop. So you guys share this broadcast, tag the moms that need to hear about it. Understand it's a business model and understand the people that are suffering the most are these children who are being cycled through over and over and over again. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I know it's sober stuff, right? This is sober stuff, but we've got to look at it. We can't put our head in the sand. We can't avoid it. You know, I know it's it's painful to look at, but we have to look at it because we have got to fix the problem. And our on both sides of the party, nobody's handling it. The only person that's willing to even look at it and talk about it right now has been Donald Trump. So I want to support our president. And I really, you call your representatives and you say it has got to stop build the wall all right thanks guys thanks for watching